Okay, right, so we are back for another living room lockdown. And today I've got something a little different for you. So this is a trick that requires two grabs, a nose and a tail grab. When I'm coaching people of a slightly more advanced level, I really encourage them to work on some double grab tricks. And there are a lot of different double grab variations you can do. I'll put some examples in here. Beneath the glam, the glitz, the bling and the glitter Sleeping in the dark in the park with no Twitter No Facebook, just a book with my face I'm eating from the trash, can you imagine the taste? It's a disgrace to be so displaced in this world for the rich Double grabs really help you and your hand coordination during tricks because it forces you to hold the middle of the bar and switch hands during the trick and makes you very present in your coordination with your grabs and your kite steering and things like that. Okay, so let's get into the nose tail backside 180. With drop tops and switches, Rolexes, phablets, Galaxy tablets, rolling in the Lexus, making calls on the Nexus, playing with a widget, wipe off the smidget. Let me get the digit while you slow, while you fidget. Life can be rigid when the situation's jagged. Seeing is nothing more than a fly from a maggot. Jim Crow. What? So, as with everything, you come into this with speed. You want to minimize the amount that you fly your kite. You don't want to fly your kite back too far and you want to get most of your height in this trick from your pop so that you're confident that you don't need to fly your kite too much to land the trick. This is how you make the switch between grabs without needing to constantly pull the kite in one direction. Fly your kite up to just before 12 o'clock, really lean into that takeoff, use your upper body to brace against the kite and then engage your heel side edge Whilst you scoop upwind, you can sheet out a little bit, and as you come into the takeoff, sheet in, use that to momentum to pop off the water, let go with your front hand to grab the nose of the board, lock the nose grab, bring that front hand back onto the bar. At this point, you switch hands on the bar, making sure that your front hand comes back on just near the center lines so that you can control your sheeting pressure, then release your back hand and bring the tail of the board up towards your back hand. It's important that you bring the board towards your hand and not your hand towards the board so that you don't go off axis during the trick. Lock that tail grab for as long as possible. Whilst you're locking that grab, you can then pull hard with your front hand that is now back on the bar so that the kite dives into the landing. Then you release the tail grab and because your back leg has been bent, and pulled up during the tail grab, you have the required momentum to do the backside 180 into the landing. Now the backside 180 is driven through the legs. You use your hips and the drop of your back leg in order to drive the backside 180 rotation out of that tail grab. Let the back leg drop as you straighten what was your front leg, it will turn around to be your back leg so that when you come down to make that backside 180 and land in blind, the back of your board is landing first. It's a little confusing because your front leg becomes your back leg just within the landing. But if you see here, you can really see how I drive that rotation with my legs and my hips. And then once I've stomped it, the upper body follows that rotation round. You can ole this out, you can ride out or pop out to riding normally again, as long as you stomp it and you ride away. 